Hey GP learners, have you ever used pointer testing kits to try and help you distinguish between whether a patient may have a bacterial or viral infection? Well, I'm going to show you one of the ones that I've been using for the past year or so to give you a flavour of what these kind of kits can do and whether you think they may be effective for you to use in your practice. Let's take in hands your primary care and learning. This is the first time we're meeting. I'm Dr Gandalf of EGP Learning, where I look at supporting you with technology enhanced primary care and learning. And in this episode, I'm going to talk to you about a piece of kit that I've been using for the past year that helps to try and distinguish whether or not a patient may have a viral or a bacterial infection when you're assessing them and can sometimes give you some extra information. Um, I've been provided this piece of kit by the company, so I had a box of 25 of these to use. Basically, I wanted to talk to you about the good, the bad, and whether or not you should consider using this. I'll leave that decision up to you, but I'm here to present the information. I'll make it quite clear that the company has not paid me to do this video, but they have provided me with the equipment to do so. So the kit's called February DX. Uh, there'll be links down below if you want to have a look at it and stuff. And effectively, let's get to the video, shall we? As always, if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to contact me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, whichever platform you prefer. If you're listening on the podcast platforms, make sure you leave a review. would love it if you could do that, especially on iTunes. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you click the like and subscribe to make sure you get all of our content first and foremost, just so that it makes it easier. And I will definitely reply to any comments you make. Anyway, let's get straight to the content, shall we? So, in, when we're looking at this kind of piece of equipment, it's called a February DX, and it's simply a point of testing piece of kit. The reason why this one's slightly different to some of the other ones you may have heard of is because this tests for various different markers, so it checks both for CRP testing, which many people may have come across in the past, as well as another enzyme called MXA. So this is an enzyme that they say is released when the body is attacked by viral infections to do with the interferon cycle and that kind of thing. And this device picks up that particular enzyme. So if it's present, it would suggest more likely that we're dealing with a viral infection rather than a bacterial infection. And obviously that information can be useful. To have a look at the device, this is it. So it's a little bit big, if I'm being honest. It's larger than most piece of kit I would expect to see but it's got some good heft and stuff behind it, so at least it, you're unlikely to drop it without care, all that kind of stuff. Um, the design it could be a little bit nicer, I guess, a bit more modern, but hey, it's produced and it's effective for what it does. And effectively what it does, so I'm gonna zoom in a bit closer for you. It's effectively a device that works kind of like a combination of a urine dipstick and a BM testing kit, because it allows you to do everything all in one. So normally there's a green part at the top that you would remove to allow access to the lancet that allows you to take the blood sample. Um, I don't have this because this is one I've been using to demo to our rest of our practice staff when showing them how to use, so that's gone. But effectively there would be a needle that comes out of this when we would do this. And this is the blood delivery mechanism. So effectively you would remove the green piece, place it next to the patient's skin and tap the button. That would deploy the needle and that would help you to get the blood well that you can capture the sample from. And then effectively you push this over and that helps to prime the device. And by doing so, you then collect the blood sample with this little capillary tube. So I'm just gonna bring that closer so you can see it hopefully. And let's just make that a bit clearer for you guys. There we go. So you can see that little blood capillary resource and that effectively the aim is to fill the blood sample all the way to the tip. Once you've done that, you then need to pull the lever to push it back to allow the blood sample to be on the reagent strip just here. And then by doing that, you then need to depress the, the fluid mechanism. So this allows the fluid to then be released. Good sharp press and in about 20 seconds or so, you'll start to see the reagent come across. And the aim of that is that you then have something that looks like this. So again, let's focus in for you guys. So this is the strips that you can see. And as you can imagine, the blood sample would drip down as a result, or pass across, and then fill up the markers. Now, which markers are we looking for? So there's a test one, as you can see the blue line, that needs to be there for it to be a valid test. And in addition, there would normally be two additional lines. So I'm gonna show you a image of the reagent strips in a second. Um, so I'm gonna take this away. So this, should show you what the results look like. And as you can see, you've got various different types of results you can have. For a negative test and for an accurate test, you need to have the blue strip at the bottom. And so that's the test reagent strip. And then in addition, you may see two additional lines. So a red MXA line or a black CRP line. So if you have the MXA line at all visible, then that would suggest that there is the MX pro MXA protein. And as a result of that, we are more likely dealing with a viral infection. If you have just the CRP line, um, or if it's faintly positive, then that may suggest a bacterial infection and less likely that you're dealing with a viral infection, according to the information from the company. 
and as a result of that, that may help with the diagnostic process. Obvious question is, how useful is this? Well, it's important to remember that this is based on clinical information that you have from the patient that you would want to test this, and it may help in those situations where there's a bit of uncertainty as to what type of infection you may be dealing with, and there are some patients where that can be appropriate. Um, it's important to remember that you still need that clinical information, otherwise it's pointless doing so. There is clearly a cost with this piece of equipment, so they go for about £12 a piece of kit, which, you know, is not an insurmountable amount of money. Is that an effective way of using it? Well, potentially mechanisms you could use, you could have HCAs do this testing kit. So if you were doing a triage system in your practice and you were fairly convinced that the patient had a viral based symptoms but wanted to confirm, um, you, in part you could arrange a process where the patient comes into the practice, has a test done, if the test is negative, viral, and therefore they don't need any further treatment apart from symptomatic advice and safety netting, which you may have already given that through a triage system. Another cohort of patients where this may be really useful is actually in the nursing home patients. So when you get contacts, this little old lady's a little bit chesty, and actually you, from the symptoms you've got, you're fairly convinced it's most likely a bit of a cold, but you want reassurance, but don't have the capacity to visit. There is the option of leaving some of these with the nursing staff. It's just like a BM, which they would normally be able to train in nursing homes and stuff to be done. And then as a result of that, they can do the test and give you the information from there and obviously give appropriate safety netting advice as such from there. Important things to know, the company do claim that this is only used for urties. Clearly, at this moment in time that this video is going out, we've got the coronavirus going around like crazy, and I assume that the company is not convinced that their information is valid enough to say that it's suitable for the coronavirus flu epidemic. However, it is a virus. Does that give you some information? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Can't answer that question for you. Is this something that you can use in practice? I think it is. Um, so we've been using it for the past year. We've had various patients that have come in and used this. The, I guess to talk about some of the negatives, um, it doesn't always work. That's my key thing. So there have been a couple of times where particularly the capillary delivery mechanism has blocked off and the patient's clotting their blood supply before we've been able to get a decent sample because you do need a little bit more blood than you would for an average BM. And because it is quite a narrow tube, it can block off. It takes a bit of time to get that supply. That may be down to an individual patient issue with coagulopathy and that kind of stuff. But to be honest, we've had a couple of instances where that's been the case. And as a result of that, the blood delivery mechanism hasn't been accurate and therefore it's not transferred across, so we've not had an accurate result. Um, another thing that we found is that you really do have to depress this button quite quickly and effectively because sometimes it doesn't release the reagent and you sat there 10 minutes waiting and realize, oh, actually it's not worked, and then you have to press it again. But by that point, again, the blood's um, thickened and therefore it's not a valid sample and therefore that's less effective. But does it work? Well, I've used this in a few patients where uh, we've had challenges in terms of helping the patient understand what type of infection they may have had. I tend to go more of my clinical decision making and I've yet to have this pretty wrong, which is good, I guess. But at the same time, what I have found and really useful, so I've had a couple of patients where they have felt that they need antibiotics for their upper respiratory tract infection. My clinical advice has been that that's not been the case. By doing this, it's given a definitive answer that from the patients that I've seen with them, has helped them understand that a lot more effectively. Is that because I wasn't communicating effectively? Maybe. Is that just individual patient issues? Maybe. But there has been a noticeable impact in the room just simply by using this device. And you could argue to some degree that may help in some elements with workload and stress within practices. I think potentially networks could consider using these as a mechanism if they're looking at trying to reduce their acute demand possibly by having hubs that could use these kind of devices and as I said in practice you could have them done by HCAs potentially if the mechanism of teaching people was good really good you could even potentially get patients doing it I don't know I'm just putting that out there but I do think it is a useful piece of kit um, would I pay for it hmm if you'd asked me a couple of weeks I was still on the fence with coronavirus and that kind of stuff and the impact that's now having on our practice with acute respiratory tract infections and stuff maybe a bit more so and I do like the way it works I would personally like it to be slightly nicer looking. It's an aesthetic thing personally, but you know what? It does the job. It does the job well. Does the aesthetics really, really matter? Probably not, to be honest. However, the delivery mechanism, it could be nice if that was in a different format. But I do think this kit works and it does seem to have a noticeable impact with patients. And I've not seen patients' reactions like that before with any other kind of equipment or any other kind of process that I've had in practice. So it does seem to satisfy patients when they've got a bit more information to help them. And from the feedback we've had with patients when we've looked at their subsequent attendances, the ones I have done this on, they've not gone to any afterwards, which is interesting, I think. 
So should you use it? I'll leave that decision up to you. I think it is a nice piece of kit. Is it cost effective for practice to use? Maybe, it depends on how you look at the finances and also how you look at the staffing and that kind of stuff. And I think there are potentially some really imaginative uses, particularly in care home cohorts of patients and potentially with the increased shift of triage systems that we're seeing across the area. As I said, I'll leave some links down to the company if you want to contact them and stuff for further information, and there'll be links to all the information I've discussed and stuff on there as well. Um, but let me know what you think. Would you consider using this kind of kit in your practice? Have you been using this kind of kit in your practice, and what have you found in terms of using them? Have they been good? Have they been bad? I'd actually be quite keen to know what you guys think, because I think it's interesting, and maybe I think we're going to look at using this a bit more in practice. We will see. As always, guys, if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to contact me, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whichever platform you prefer, either at DrGandor52 or at EGP Learning. Obviously, if you're listening on the podcast platform, we'd love it if you could leave a review on iTunes. Really helpful, and we really appreciate them when we get them. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you click the subscribe button and leave us a comment down below. I guarantee you'll get a reply, as always. And if you've got any questions, let me know. And as always, EGP Learning is here to help save you and your patient's time by taking enhancing your primary care and learning. Catch you in the next episode.